Abu Muhammad Ali ibn Ahmad ibn Sa'id ibn Hazm Arabic, Ab Memdi Li bn Amd bn Sid bn Hazm also sometimes known as Al-Andalusi as Zahiri, November 7, 994 to August 15, 1064 456 AH was an Andalusian poet, polymath, historian, jurist, philosopher, and theologian, born in Córdoba, present-day Spain. He was a leading proponent and codifier of the Zahiri school of Islamic thought, and produced a reported 400 works of which only 40 still survive. The Encyclopedia of Islam refers to him as having been one of the leading thinkers of the Muslim world, and he is widely acknowledged as the father of comparative religious studies. <laughs> Personal life Lineage <laughs> 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 Ibn Hazm's grandfather Sa'id and his father Ahmad both held high advisory positions in the court of the Umayyad Caliph Hisham II. The family claimed to be of Persian descent. However, scholars believe it more likely that they were Iberian Christians who converted to Islam. Upbringing <inaudible> 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 Having been raised in a politically and economically important family, Ibn Hazm mingled with people of power and influence all his life. He had access to levels of government by his adolescence that most people at the time would never know throughout their whole lives. These experiences with government and politicians caused Ibn Hazm to develop a reluctant and even sad skepticism about human nature and the capacity of human beings to deceive and oppress. His reaction was to believe that there was no refuge or truth except with an infallible God, and that with men resided only corruption. Ibn Hazm was thus known for his cynicism regarding humanity and a strong respect for the principles of language and sincerity in communication. Topic. Career Ibn Hazm lived among the circle of the ruling hierarchy of the Umayyad government. His experiences produced an eager and observant attitude, and he gained an excellent education at Córdoba. His talent gained him fame and allowed him to enter service under the caliphs of Córdoba and al-Mansur ibn Abi Amir, Grand Vizier to the last of the Umayyad caliphs, Hisham III. He was also a colleague of Abd al-Rahman Sanchuelo. After the death of the Grand Vizier al muzaffar in 1008, the Umayyad Caliphate of Iberia became embroiled in a civil war that lasted until 1031 resulting in its collapse of the central authority of Córdoba and the emergence of many smaller incompetent states called taifas. Ibn Hazm's father died in 1012. Ibn Hazm was frequently imprisoned as a suspected supporter of the Umayyads. By 1031, Ibn Hazm retreated to his family estate at Manta Lishim and had begun to express his activist convictions in the literary form. He was a leading proponent and codifier of the Zahiri school of Islamic thought, and produced a reported 400 works of which only 40 still survive. Due to his political and religious opponents gaining power after the collapse of the caliphate, he accepted an offer of asylum from the governor of the island of Majorca in the 1040s, and he continued to propagate the Zahiri school there before returning to Andalusia. Contemporaries coined the saying, The tongue of Ibn Hazm was a twin brother to the sword of al Hajjaj, an infamous 7th century general and governor of Iraq, and he became so frequently quoted that the phrase, Ibn Hazm said, Became proverbial, as an Athari, he opposed the allegorical interpretation of religious texts, preferring instead a grammatical and syntactical interpretation of the Quran. He granted cognitive legitimacy only to revelation and sensation and considered deductive reasoning insufficient in legal and religious matters. He rejected practices common among more orthodox schools such as juristic discretion. While initially a follower of the Maliki school of law within Sunni Islam, he switched to the Shafi'i school later and, around the age of 30, finally settled with the Zahiri school. He is perhaps the most well-known adherent to the school, and the main source of extant works on Zahirite law. He studied the school's precepts and methods under Abu al-Qiyar al-Dawadi al-Zahiri of Santarim municipality, and was eventually promoted to the level of a teacher of the school himself. In 1029, the two of them were expelled from the main mosque of Córdoba for their activities. Works <laughs> Ibn Hazm has been described as the second most prolific author in Muslim history, only surpassed by Muhammad ibn Jarir al-Tabari in terms of works authored. 
While much of Ibn Hazm's work was burned in Seville by an alliance of his sectarian and political opponents, a number of his books have survived. His writing style has been described as repetitive, which was Ibn Hazm's way of emphasizing a point he felt was important to a given discussion. His method of dialogue was harsh, and he appeared to have little fear or respect for those who disagreed with him, be they fellow academics or government officials. In addition to works on law and theology, Ibn Hazm also wrote more than ten books on medicine. He also addressed the issue of integrating the sciences into a standard curriculum for education. His work Organization of the Sciences divides education of the various fields diachronically into stages of progressive acquisition. The entire curriculum he suggests spans five years, starting with language and exegesis of the Quran, includes the life and physical sciences and culminates with a sort of rational theology. Topic. Detailed critical examination In his Fasal detailed critical examination, a treatise on Islamic science and theology, Ibn Hazm stressed the importance of sense perception as he realized that human reason can be flawed. While he recognized the importance of reason, since the Quran itself invites reflection, he argued that this reflection refers mainly to revelation and sense data, since the principles of reason are themselves derived entirely from sense experience. He concludes that reason is not a faculty for independent research or discovery, but that sense perception should be used in its place, an idea that forms the basis of empiricism. <laughs> Logic Ibn Hazm wrote The Scope of Logic, in which he stressed on the importance of sense perception as a source of knowledge. He wrote that the First sources of all human knowledge are the soundly used senses and the intuitions of reason, combined with a correct understanding of a language." Ibn Hazm also criticized some of the more traditionalist theologians who were opposed to the use of logic and argued that the first generations of Muslims did not rely on logic. His response was that the early Muslims had witnessed the revelation directly, whereas the Muslims of his time have been exposed to contrasting beliefs, hence the use of logic is necessary in order to preserve the true teachings of Islam. The work was first republished in Arabic by Isan Abbas in 1959, and most recently by Abu Abd al-Rahman ibn Akhl al-Zahiri in 2007. Ethics. <laughs> <laughs> In his book, In Pursuit of Virtue, Ibn Hazm had urged his readers with the following Do not use your energy except for a cause more noble than yourself. Such a cause cannot be found except in Almighty God Himself, to preach the truth, to defend womanhood, to repel humiliation which your Creator has not imposed upon you, to help the oppressed. Anyone who uses his energy for the sake of the vanities of the world is like someone who exchanges gemstones for gravel. Topic. Poetry A poem, or fragment of a poem, by him is preserved in Ibn Said al-Maghribi's Penance of the Champions. You came to me just before The Christians rang their bells. The half-moon was rising Looking like an old man's eyebrow Or a delicate instep, and although it was still night When you came a rainbow Gleamed on the horizon Showing as many colors as a peacock's tail. Topic. Views Topic. Language In addition to his views on honesty in communication, Ibn Hazm also addressed the science of language to some degree. He viewed the Arabic language, the Hebrew language and the Syriac language as all essentially being one language which branched out as the speakers settled in different geographic regions and developed different vocabularies and grammars from the common root. He also differed with many Muslim theologians in that he didn't view Arabic as superior to other languages, this was due to the fact that the Quran does not describe Arabic as such, and in Ibn Hazm's view there was no proof for claiming any language was superior to another. Topic. Literalism Ibn Hazm was well known for his strict literalism, and is considered the champion of the literalist Zahirite school within Sunni Islam. A commonly cited example is his interpretation of the first half of verse 23 in the Quranic chapter of al-Isra prohibiting one from saying, Uff 
To one's parents, Ibn Hazm said that half of the verse only prohibits saying, UFF, and doesn't prohibit hitting one's parents for example, but rather that hitting them is prohibited by the second half of the verse as well as verse 24 which command kind treatment of parents. Topic. Philosophy Ibn Hazm's works lightly touched upon the traditions of Greek philosophy. Agreeing with both Epicurus and Prodicus of Ceos, he stated that pleasure brings happiness in life and there is nothing to fear in death. He believed that these philosophical traditions, while useful, were not enough to properly build an individual's character, and stated that Islamic faith was also necessary. The concept of absolute free will was rejected by Ibn Hazm, as he believed that all of an individual's attributes are created by God. Topic. Shia Ibn Hazm was highly critical of the Shia sect. Topic. Reception Muslim scholars, especially those subscribing to Zahirism, have often praised Ibn Hazm for what they perceive as his knowledge and perseverance. Yemeni preacher Mukbil bin Hadi al Wadi'i was one of Ibn Hazm's admirers in recent times, holding the view that no other Muslim scholar had embodied the prophetic tradition of the Muhammad and the Sahaba. Similarly, Pakistani cleric Badi Ud Din Shah al Rashidi taught Ibn Hazm's book Al Muhalla to students in Masjid al Haram, while living in Mecca. Al Wadi'i himself taught Al Muhalla in Al Masjid and Nabawi, while in Medina. Abu Abd al Rahman ibn Akhl al Zahiri, the primary biographer of Ibn Hazm in the modern era, has authored a number of works on Ibn Hazm's life and career, many published through Ibn Akhl's printing press, which is named after Ibn Hazm. Modernist revival of Ibn Hazm's general critique of Islamic legal theory has seen several key moments in Arab intellectual history, including Ahmad Shakir's republishing of Al Muhalla, Muhammad Abu Zara's biography of Ibn Hazm, and the republishing of archived epistles on legal theory theory by Said al-Afghani in 1960 and Isan Abbas between 1980 and 1983. See also Hazem name Miguel Asin Palacios topic References topic Sources The Ring of the Dove by Ibn Hazem, translation and preface by A. J. Arbery ISBN 1-898942-02-1 Al-Fasl Fi Al-Malal Wa Al-Ahwa Wa Al-Nihel, by Ibn Hazem. Byrat, Dar al Jil, 1985. A Benazam de Cordoba y su Historia Critica de las Ideas Religiosas Vols, 1 5, by Miguel Asin Palacios. Madrid, 1928 1932. Muslim Writers on Judaism and the Hebrew Bible, From Ibn Rabin to Ibn Hazm, by Camilla Adang. Leiden, E. J. Brill, 1996. ISBN 90-04-10034-2 Ibn Hazm et la polémique islamo-chrétienne dans l'histoire de l'islam, by Abdelilah el Jamai. Leiden, Brill, 2003. ISBN 90-04-12844-1 Ibn Hazm Kilal Alf Aam, by Abu Abd al-Rahman ibn Akhl al-Zahiri. Lebanon, Dar al-Gharib al-Islami, 1982. 303 pages. Kitab al Akslak wa scr o Rizala fi Mudawit and Nufus wa Tadab al Akslak wa Zzuhd fi r Radial, Ibn Hazm al Andalusi, Intrad, Aid. Critique, Remarks par Eva Riyadh. Uppsala, Univ, Stockholm, Almquist and Wixell International, DISTR, 1980. ISBN 91-554-1048-0 oh, The Zahiris, Their Doctrine and Their History, A Contribution to the History of Islamic Theology by Ignaz Goldziher, Trans, and ed. Wolfgang Ben. Leiden, E. J. Brill, 1971. Ibn Hazm of Cordova, On Porphyry's Isagoge, by Rafael Ramon Guerrero, in J. Mirinos, O. Wires, eds, Florilegium Medieval. Etudes offertes a Jacqueline Hames a l'occasion de son emeritat, Louvain la Nove, FIDEM, 2009, pp. 525 540. Topic external links The original Arabic manuscript of Talk Alhamama Global Webpost Ibn Hazm and Female Prophethood Muslim Heritage Biography Britannica.org Encyclopedia Britannica article on Ibn Hazm in French, The Position of Ibn Hazm about Asherism by Atahid. Net.